Hello. Welcome. We're ready to start. If everyone can find a seat. Um, if we do run out of seats, there's a lot of standing room and it's a fairly brief ceremony. And uh, then afterwards, make sure you stay for refreshments, get something cold to drink, and we'll get started. Thank you. Yes, and here's Dr. Scribner. Welcome, everyone, to this celebration of excellence. We are very administrators and teachers and staff who are here and to our Fort Worth ISD board members. I know we have uh, Ms. C.J. Evans here with us. If we could give her a round of applause. Thank you very, very much. And I believe Quentin Phillips also is here. We'll give him a round of applause. And I think that's, that's uh, our trust, those are our trustees who are in attendance. We thank them for being here. The men and women who, are honor, who we are honoring today come from all walks of life, all parts of the city, and very diverse careers and endeavors. What they share is determination, dedication, a passion for their work, and a Fort Worth ISD education. It is with great pleasure that we add them now to the Fort Worth ISD Wall of Fame. The North American tour of the hit Broadway musical Aladdin is in full swing, and listen to this. It's the genie who steals the show. That's from the Los Angeles Times. The San Diego Union Tribune says, when Major Attaway gets unbottled, you can feel the show start to levitate. And the Dallas Observer says, he has mastered the role. Attaway has the audience laughing with every word. The tour began this year, but Major Attaway has played the genie on Broadway since 2016, also to rave reviews. Major Attaway grew up here in Fort Worth. He attended Alice Carlson Applied Learning Center. He attended the Applied Learning Academy for middle school, which had a stellar partner in Casa Manana. This exposure to great theater inspired him to focus on drama and music at Arlington Heights High School. He graduated in 2005, already a regional theater star. He performed at Casa Mañana at the Jubilee Theater, the Dallas Theater Center, and many other venues. He has performed with the Fort Worth Symphony and voiced commercials and a popular video game or two. In 2018, Major uh, received the Irma P. Hall Illumination Award for Excellence in DFW Theater. He returns to New York and Broadway this fall to spread more magic as the genie. And if there are any tickets available, uh, you can still catch him at Aladdin uh, in the Dallas Summer Musicals for one more week. But today, Major Attaway is back home, and we add him to the Fort Worth ISD Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Major Attaway. And then we'll take a group picture at the end, I think. Emily Holt Crocker is a renowned choral composer, conductor, consultant, and of course, teacher. Her life in music had its roots in Fort Worth. A powerful early influence was her home church, the Church of Christ, where her four-part harmony was sung a cappella. By age five, she could follow the musical notation. Another musical influence was her piano teacher, Laura Helen Copeland. Ms. Crocker took lessons from age seven through high school. She began at Meadowbrook Elementary, Meadowbrook Junior High, and Eastern Hills High School, where she graduated in 1968. She received her bachelor's in music from the University of North Texas, and her master's in music theory from Texas Women's University. She taught music in Texas schools for 15 years, was then hired by the world's largest print music publisher, the Hal Leonard Corporation in Milwaukee. There, she became vice president of choral publications. Ms. Crocker has composed more than 200 pieces of music. 
She was the senior author of three choral textbooks, and she also was, is music director emeritus of the Milwaukee Children's Choir, which she founded. The University of North Texas of Mu uh, College of Music named her honored alumna for 2009. And in 2017, she received the Outstanding Service Award from the Texas Choral Directors Association. That same year, she returned, excuse, excuse me, that same year she retired and moved back home to Fort Worth, where she continues to compose music and consult. Let's welcome Miss Emily Holt Crocker. The astronauts who raced for the moon weren't the only ones with the right stuff. The men and women who helped them get there and back were also incredibly skilled and mentally tough. Among them, Gerald Griffin, a 1952 graduate of Arlington Heights High School. Jerry, as he's called, earned a degree in aeronautical engineering from Texas A&M. He served four years in the Air Force and became a systems engineer and flight controller at the U.S. Air Force Satellite Test Center. In 1964, he joined NASA, first as a Gemini flight controller and then as a flight director for all Apollo manned missions. Amazingly, he found himself working with a Pascal grad, ast astronaut Alan Bean. In 1970, Jerry's assignment was to lead the lunar landing for Apollo 13. But only 56 hours into that flight, an oxygen tank on board exploded. Jerry and his mission control team scrapped the moon landing plans and put everything they had into getting Apollo 13 and its three astronauts back to Earth safely. If you haven't already, be sure to read Bud Kennedy's story in the Star-Telegram on Jerry Griffin's fascinating NASA career. Jerry became de deputy director of the Kennedy Space Center and the director of the Johnson Space Center. After retiring from NASA, he served as president and CEO of the Greater Houston Chamber of Commerce. He was also a technical advisor on Apollo 13 and other films. His many awards include NASA's Distinguished Service Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which was awarded to the Apollo 13 Mission Operations Team for what has been called NASA's finest hour. Let's celebrate Mr. Jerry Griffin. Congratulations to you. Mrs. Opal Lee is a force of good. She attended Cooper Street Elementary and graduated from I.M. Terrell High School in 1943. She married, had four children, and then went back to school. She earned her Bachelor of Arts from Wiley College and her Master's in Counseling and Guidance from the University of North Texas. She taught at Amanda McCoy Elementary and then served as a counselor until she retired from Fort Worth ISD in 1977. And she was just getting started. <laughs> Ms. Lee founded the Community Food Bank and co-founded Citizens Concerned with Human Dignity to help low-income families find housing. She was on the board of the local Habitat for Humanity and Unity Unlimited. She co-founded the Tarrant County Black Historical and Genealogical Society, and she's also a founding member of the Community Food Bank. And the list goes on. At 93, she's still adding to that list. 92. <laughs> and a half, thank you, Opal. I was rounding up. Earlier this year, Earlier this year, there was a ribbon cutting for Opal's Farm, a program based on her vision to provide fresh produce to residents of the United Riverside neighborhood. And each year, Opal Lee strives to make Fort Worth Juneteenth celebration bigger than the year before. 
She made national news in recent years for his symbolic walks to Washington to convince Congress and the President to declare Juneteenth a national holiday, a cause she continues to push for. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Opal Lee. IAM Terrell High School has turned out a remarkable number of creative, critically acclaimed musicians. We're honoring one of them today, the late Dewey Redmond. He was born in 1931 and at the age of 13 started playing clarinet at church. He continued playing in the band at IAM Terrell where his bandmates included Ornette Coleman and King Curtis Ousley, both here on our Wall of Fame. Mr. Redmond earned his bachelor's degree in industrial arts at Prairie, Prairie View A&M and switched from clarinet to saxophone. He served in the Army, taught school, while getting his master's in education at the University of North Texas. In 1959, he moved to California to pursue, to pursue music full time. One night, in a San Francisco jazz club, he played to an audience that included John Coltrane. They ended up playing sessions together, and Mr. Redmond said he learned at every opportunity from the great Coltrane. In 1967, Mr. Redmond moved to New York and reunited with Ornette Coleman. They performed together for the next seven years. Mr. Redmond continued to play for 30 more years. He recorded with his son, Joshua Redmond, also an acclaimed saxophonist. He performed at a tribute to Ornette Coleman at Lincoln Center in 2004 and he played his final concert in 2006, just days before his death. Representing the Redmond family is Chris Walk, the Fort Worth ISD Executive Director of Visual and Performing Arts. Let's please recognize Joshua Redmond. Burl Yarbrough association with Texas League Baseball goes back to childhood. He grew up following the Dallas-Fort Worth Spurs. The minor league team played at Turnpike Stadium in Arlington from 1965 to 1971. But never in Burl's young mind did he expect to one day be the president of one of the premier teams in the league, the San Antonio Missions. Burl at attended Wycliffe Elementary School and Leonard Middle School. He graduated from Western Hills High School in 1975. He earned his bachelor's in marketing from the University of Texas at Arlington and a master's in sports administration from St. Thomas University in Miami. He joined the missions in 1987 as a general manager and in 1998 was named president of the organization. He's still there, still doing what he loves. During his tenure, the Missions have won six Texas League championships. He is a four-time Texas League Executive of the Year. And in 2016, he was named Texas League Hall of Famer, the league's highest honor. This is his 32nd season with the Missions, and it's a big one. Just last year, the Missions advanced from double-A ball to triple-A ball. So how, how, are we, how are we doing, Burl? We, make, we having a good year? Thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Burl Yarbrough. While the Wall of Fame honors extraordinary alumni, it also says to our students that you can do it. You can do it too with dedication, with courage, respect and connection with your teachers and mentors. And we thank each one of you for being here, not only to recognize these new Wall of Famers, 
but also for sending the message to our students that investing in our students is the best investment that we can make because they too can grow up and do great things like these Wall of Famers. We thank all of you for coming you for coming here. We thank Major Attaway, Emily Holt Crocker, Gerald Griffin, Opal Lee, the late Dewey Redman, Burl Yarborough for making your district, our district, very, very proud. Thank you to all of you. Oh, okay. Uh, if you, we'll all uh, stay around a few minutes. We'll get some more group pictures and with Great. the honorees and any with your family. And then everyone else, be sure to get something cold yes. to drink. Yeah. <laughs> we apologize for the heat. And uh, yeah, just enjoy. Look around Thank for photos. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Where would you like us? Right over here. Okay, why, why